Now, getting it working right is, is a bit of a learning curve because uh, the machine is kind of stupid. Let's just say that. It is. It cannot tell when it is messed up. All it knows is it needs to move here, put some material down, move here, put some material down, move here, put some material down. It can't tell if, for example, the plastic has probably adhered to the bed sheet. You know, so you might come in one day and find basically something that looks like a plate of spaghetti on your print bed. That is the technical term spaghetti. Um, so you will have to make sure that your bottom sheet is clean, make sure that your nozzle is clean. It is about as much work as getting a uh, regular 2D printer going. Um, uh, so it's a bit of a learning curve now. Um, along with that, you also have to do something called bed leveling, which is where you will have to basically make sure all the parts are aligned. And for that, you will have to actually take like a little note card and run it along the bottom of the, dish, of the sheet and make sure that the nozzle in its neutral position is like exactly aligned. We're talking about like tenths of a millimeter. It's, it's not that hard to do, but it is something that you have to get used to. Uh, but I mean, once you get it all working, you know, once you all set up, once you get working properly, it, it's kind of amazing, you know, you can basically just find whatever you want online, and you know, with a couple of minutes work, you can make it reality. Um, and eventually able to design your own things too, and that is pretty neat. Um, and I brought a couple other things, a couple of those things with me. Um, you can make little statuettes here, you can make useful things, like this is a little battery holder, if you use a lot of double-way batteries. Um, if you just want to mess around, you can make a lightsaber. And this, this is as cool, this is all prints out in one piece. Um, maybe I shouldn't use this manual one here, but yeah, one of these. It's not as good as one when you find at the Disney store, but it all prints out all in one piece just like this. And like it literally comes off just like this. You don't have to assemble it or anything. And then just like that. Um, these little puzzle cubes also are just one piece, no assembly required. Whoever designed these was some sort of genius because it's um, some things that are a little bit of stumbling card. I have a little dice tower here that twist down. Yeah. Um, little model city from a video game. Uh, this is man made. Oops, it's fine. It's, it, that's sturdy. It won't break. Made a little um, butter mold for making turkey shaped butter patties. So, get a phone stand, little. SD card holder. I mean, this is really just scratching the surface. If you go online to a site like Thingiverse or Makers or just, just search 3D models and you can find like hundreds of things. So much that you will not have time to even go through and look at everything. So, um, and then of course there are people that make professional looking models like your your uh, Dungeon Dragons figurines and stuff. Those do cost a little bit, but you do get some really, really neat looking ones. Um, and you can even go to sites like Hero Forge. Does anyone use Hero Forge? Okay, yeah. So it, it's basically a, it's basically a character creator um, for like your Dungeons and Dragons campaigns and whatnot. You can set up, you know, say, oh, I want a, a Griffin character wielding a sword like this, and you know, to be wearing plate armor, and you can actually export a model from there and print it out on here, and that's pretty cool. Um, also, a really great place to try to make your persona. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. So if you can, you, you know, the, the detail options there aren't all that great. But, you know, if you can make something approximating your persona on there, you can actually print it out here. Um, I know in. At one point, there was a company that was doing 
like 3D scanning at cons where you would get in your fursuit or whatever and stand on the platform and they would take like a bunch of different photos and make a 3D model and I imagine, well they would print out for you but you could also get the model file and put it in your printer. Um, any questions so far? Yes? How much would one of those custom colors, like accurate colors, be compared to one like this or just like a base color? Um, the custom color ones, or the multi-color ones, are usually a little bit more, and not all of them do. Um, what I did for this one was I started printing, and then I stopped, stopped it and switched the colors. So um, you can do that. Um, some of them have options where you know it will get to a certain point, stop it, prompt you to switch the colors in there. It's a little bit slower, but you can do more custom colors like that. I will say if you want really detailed colors, it's bigger, yeah. yeah, you want to paint, yeah. So, yeah. Any other questions? Um, right. For those who just came in, this is 3D printing 101. Um, what else do we got? Um, cleaning. So, let's see, you will need to keep, you know, things clean and maintained. Um, there's a couple different solutions you can use, but what I find is really, you know, a couple of different products you can order online, 3D printer clean or whatnot. Honestly, you just get some cheap acetone, you, you know, put just a little drop on a little washcloth, you wipe off your print bed, and you know, you're done. You don't need to worry about specialty products. Uh, obviously, if you users a lot, you will want to replace parts. That's not too hard either. Um, as, and as far as choices for the colors, um, there are a ton. Um, I just have a couple of them here. I have, this is printing out just white, some sparkly red. I have some metallic looking, this one is uh, the, oh yes, silk. Sun gray. I don't know if that's a real color or not, but um, and there are a couple of different materials you can use. I don't have any of that here, but there is one that comes out very rubbery, like to make a foam case with. So it's not rigid, but it'll actually bend a little bit. Um, and then there's a tougher one that you would use for. And let's say you're making a bunch of guard ornaments, you don't want them to fade after a year. Um, so there's a bunch of different options out there. Um, and as far as brands, it's just whatever works best for you. Some people swear by one brand of filament, some people swear by another. Personally, I like uh, this one here called Hatchbox. I think it has a pretty good price to quality ratio. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend trying to go for like really cheap filament, for, you know, because it, it might work, but at the same time, it, it might clog up the printer, it might break. Um, you know, though again, it's also what you are able to source and not everything could be in stock, you know. We're uh, halfway through. Um, any further questions right now? Yeah, yeah. What's the biggest project you've ever printed? Um, I, yes, I have, I, I don't want to say half printed because I ended up giving up on it halfway, you understand. But I got files to build a massive kind of airship playset um, that it, you know, is like five, uh, ten times the, uh, uh, apologies. It, it's it was like 50 pieces they had to print out and glue together. Um, and I, when I say pieces, I mean pieces that would fit in this build space here. So it was about this wide and about this tall. And I got about halfway through it, and I ended up giving up on it sadly. I still have pieces in my garage, and I keep telling myself I'm going to go back and finish that project one day. You know. Um, it, you know, other, as far as size, you are limited a little bit by how big your printer can 
cramped because it's, it's basically think of a cube because the motors can't go beyond the width of the axles here. So um, most printers are going to be about this big. I think this is like it's in millimeters, so it's about 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters, which is about a foot by a foot by a foot. Um, I'm going to be smaller. I had one that was like half as big in one dimension, so close to mini shoebox size, I guess. Um, so, so if you want to print like huge statues, that might be a bit hard if you want to print, I mean you're basically this tall for most printers. You're not going to find too many that are bigger than that unless you are looking for industrial ones. Um, but you know, if you are if you want to mess around with model files and then get the glue glue out and the magnets out, you can make something pretty big for them. Anything else? Any other questions? Have you done any resin printing? Not yet. I keep meaning to look into getting a resin printer. Right now, I so so there are two different kinds of printers. This is the more popular one. I would say uh, it's called FDM, which. Don't ask me what that means. Filament, something. It uses uh, plastic filament like this, comes in a spool. Um, there is another one that uses resin that comes out, usually clear. Um, and that one basically bakes line by line. So it uses, I think, correct me if I'm wrong on this, lasers basically to. Uh, no, so what it is is it's an array of UV lights, yeah. usually okay. LEDs. Yeah. Uh, run through a diffuser and then, and then up to a LCD panel. The LCD panel blacks up the parts that you don't want to hard and leaves clear the parts you do. The resin is UV reactive, so once it's exposed to UV light, it hardens almost, it hardens within about anywhere from three to 10 seconds, depending on the formula for the resin. Yeah. And then it's layer by layer. Okay. Uh, I will say this, and just that, the one of the advantages that resin printing has, or SLA printing has, or FPM, is the speed. Yeah. So printing a single thing may be faster on an, S on an FDM printer, but if you build the entire build plate, the only thing that determines how fast that resin print will come out is the height. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, obviously, there's no downside here that this takes a while. Yeah. Um, I started, started this about 10 minutes before the panel started, and it, it will not finish up in the time we have here, unfortunately. I did want to have something going. Um, I mean, something like this is, I want to say, like six to ten hours. So, you know, this is not a quick process. The advantage is that it is an unattended process. So you can set it up and forget it. And then come back every couple of hours, take the stuff off, start a new program. Any other questions? I think you want to see the dice house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. accurately. Uh, yeah, sure. Actually, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it is. Nice. Yeah. So, I'll put the tray there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
Um, How does that relate to something like an Ender 3? Because they kind of look a little similar, but. Yeah, it's, it's the same sort of technology. You've got an X motor, a Y motor, a Z motor. Um, it's, a, it's a bit higher end. Um, it had, I think the biggest feature I can say is it does auto bed leveling. So you don't have to worry about getting your uh, Z offset too much. Um, and it does uh, get power interrupt. So, so if the power goes out, which as we all know is a thing that happened in Florida, it should resume from where it left off. I will say it has, in my estimation, about a 66% win ratio on that. So you, you can't count that too much, but it is handy when it works right. Better than a coin flip. Yeah, yeah, better than a coin flip, yeah. That only depends on how long the power is out for. Yeah, like yeah. If you had another Hurricane Charlie and your power is out for two weeks, you're probably going to have to write that turn off. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, if, if it's off for too long, things start to cool down. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the position shifts by, again, even just a few fractions of millimeters and pulls off. Or it's, you know, the plastic stops adhering to itself so low because it's cold. So it's better to not depend too much on that power in the future, but it is nice when it works. But yes? Um, any other uh, tips to do, like, if, say, say right, 95% and then the panel, the, uh, it loses its adhesion? Um, I have seen some people online have success with basically trying to fix it in the exact same spot and then uploading a file that is just the last 5%. And, you know, if it's something that's been running for 48 hours, you just really want to fix that print, then yeah, you can try and do something. But at the same time, if, if it's sometimes good, just write it off and start over. So, you know, I wish I could give you better advice than that. You know, I have had, I have had that problem before. I have I had lost a two-day print, you know, so. I, I had a, a week-long Mandalorian helmet. Oh, no. I'm and, so sorry. And it was scary at first because I did not double-check the amount of film it was going to need, and I ran out three-quarters of the way. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Quickly, quick change. It went back, and it got about five more percent in, mm -hmm. and then it lost adhesion. And then I was like, trying to hold it, it was like, just, just stay. And it had another 3% completed, and then I was like, I gave up. Yeah, yeah, so that's another point, that, that this is still a relatively new hobby, relatively new technology, and you, there is a request, uh, a required amount of patience to it, a required amount of. You will fail. It will fail. fail, yes, it will fail. You will waste your material, you will waste your time, um, you may, and you might get it working, you know? Uh, any other questions? Is it possible to reuse old filler if you mess up? Uh, yeah, I have seen some people do this online that they have set up where you're able to grind up the old filament and basically re roll it into a new um, spool. Um, I won't say new, it, but a reusable spool. Um, now, the amount of effort required to do that is not. Measure it with how much, yeah. So, you know, you'd be spending, you know, a couple hours of effort for to, yeah. So, unfortunately, they're, you know, um, it's pretty much the same place as nuclear fusion right now, yeah. You, <laughs> no, it's not permanently 10 years away, it's a lot of <laughs> real soon now, GM. Questions? We are. Uh, yes, in the back. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't there was no, I'm so sorry. And that's okay. Um, so, on the filament printers, you would suggest maybe doing more like landscape or more cube style things as opposed to like miniature printing, which you could obviously use a, like a resin, 3D resin printer for? Uh, landscape. Uh, I mean, like buildings and square objects, you know. Uh, there's, there's advantages to doing all versus wide. Um, the, the big thing is that each layer has to build upon the next one. So if you know you want to, or you generally have 
if possible, things that are not wider at the top than the base. Mm -hmm. So that's how you yeah, orient most of it. Right upside down. Yes. Yeah, now now the, the print software does a pretty good job of adding basically temporary material on there that is meant to snap off once it's done printing. So you know if you have like uh, I don't know, let's say you tried to print this thing upside down here, it would add just a ton of material around here and here and all over the place. And then you get it and then you would basically remove all that material. Um, if you ever built, built like a plastic model on the little runner screws, it's kind of like that. Um, if you've ever played 40K, you know that you're cutting them off. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I ideally want to have it print out without needing those because if, if you care about it, those support do tend to leave a little mark and you are wasting a little bit of plastic and takes a bit more time. So. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Dual filament. Dual filament. So you are you talking about like the uh, I have some, I didn't bring it with me. I, some of that quantum stuff or oh, like, no, no, sorry, I meant uh, dual extruder. Oh dual extruder, yes. I had one for a while that was basically it's two print head print novels. And then yeah, both are pretty cool. Um, that is how I printed out this thing actually. So it yes, it does one at a time that you know let's say you a little blue on the left and red on the right. I was, I was thinking about the uh because there's a specific, um, I, I looked it up once, a kind of water soluble. Oh, yeah. And I was th thinking of trying to upgrade mine to do dual extrusion, and one would be the filter that I want to use, and the other one was strictly for support. Yeah. Have you had a experience with that yet? Uh, I have not yet. Um, I have pre ordered the new model from Prusa that has like five different print heads, and I wanted to start experimenting with that stuff, but I have not got into the water-soluble filament yet, so. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Uh, thank you for all for attending. I um, hope this has been informative. If you got any questions you want to ask in private, you can come right up. Um, I will on that note mention that if you are planning on printing anything that goes inside your body, you'll want to look up the rest of what you use. I am talking, of course, about silverware, you know, just silverware. All right. And I have a couple things here. If you'd like to take home a souvenir, feel free to come and grab something. Thank you, thank you very much. Does that rainbow castle extend like the other?